Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel, I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades. We do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for as little as $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In the previous video we looked at MMTLP and the focus was on big questions for FINRA so please refer back to the previous video for all those questions. In today's video we're going to be following up by looking at MMTLP and the key focus of today's video is going to be looking at why it was halted. So we're going to be looking at the reasons why it was halted from a legal point of view and uh, what the justification was from FINRA. Um, what we're also going to do to counterbalance that we're going to be looking at the rules and the leg legislation uh, presented by the SEC with regard to short selling. Uh, so if there is uh, uh, legislation used for one side, why is it not used for the other side? So we'll be having a look at, at that shortly as well. So stay tuned for that. So uh, let's have a look at some other updates. So uh, uh, shout out here to Mr. Cameron Moore. Uh, so he is uh, joining in with the community and keeping the pressure on. So we're putting the pressure on the SEC, the DTCC, uh, as well as FINRA and also your local government uh, representatives such as congressmen, senators, etc. So we shout out here to Congressman Mike Simpson. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what Mike Simpson's background is, but he has responded here to Mr. Moore. And what he said is uh, he doesn't sit on the committee with regards to FINRA or anything involved in that, but he is going to monitor the situation and you can be confident uh, that I will keep your thoughts uh, in mind should anything related legislation come before me on the floor of the House of Representatives. So it's good that we're getting awareness. I hope Mike is true to his word and I hope Mike does pay attention to what's going on because obviously well, there has been significant uh, manipulation and grievances here with regard to MMTLP. Uh, so let's say, stay tuned see if there are developments from there. And the next uh, development and update I'd like to share with you here, shout out here to Ham and what he's updated here with regard to um, a date for your diary. We're looking at Sunday, December the 8th. There's going to be a call at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, he's looking at working on having John Berda uh, there available as well and uh, West Christian to go over legal versus naked short. So uh, try to check in with that and hopefully we'll get some further details and updates. The main theme of today's video is a follow on from Pro Street Art. And uh, if you check out this video, this is an outstanding video covering rule 644A uh, section 3 covering uniform practice code advisories, MMTLP investors will win. So uh, check out this video. Uh, and this uh, gave an excellent perspective on this uh, piece of legislation. So let's have a look at the legislation in question. So it's 6440 uh, trading and quotation halt in OTC securities. And we're looking at the bottom section three of uh, part A, which is authority for initiating a trading and quotation halt. So uh, we can see here what the, the guidelines lines that the FINRA are following under section three are extraordinary event has occurred or is ongoing that has had a material effect on the market for uh, the OTC security or has caused uh, or has the potential to cause major disruption to the marketplace or significant uncertainty in the settlement and clearance process. So that's what they're saying. So let's have a look at the official wording from FINRA when it was halted. So we can see here uh, from um, the highlighted red section here, we can see what they are saying is uh, FINRA has determined that an, that an extraordinary event has occurred or is ongoing that has caused or has the potential to cause significant uncertainty certainty in the settlement and clearance process for shares in MMTLP and therefore uh, halting trading and quoting in MMTLP is necessary to protect investors and the public interest. So uh, the key thing I want to focus here on is the uh, public interest section here, uh, because I think uh, in terms of what's ha what's happened or what they expected to happen, uh, they are now going to use this rule to deem this against the public interest. So I'm going to present to you a theory now, which I think uh, FINRA were looking at. Uh, so let's have a look at this and see if this was the reason why they halted. 
So what I'm now going to do is uh, look at the point of view of the hedge funds and also look at the point of view of the short sellers as well as the brokers. So this is what they were probably thinking. So they were probably thinking, well, we are in deep, deep trouble here. We are truly, truly uh, not in a position where we can get out of this. It's going to cost us dollars. So what can we do about it? So there was this th thing that we've just highlighted here. FINRA section 6440 uh, part A section 3 authority for initiating a trading halt. Uh, so they're, they're using this justification here in terms of causing a major disruption to the marketplace. So what is this major disruption? So if we look at uh, some of the days prior to um, uh, the actual close of MMTLP, uh, we saw it run from around about $1, $1.50 all the way up, uh, I think close to around just in excess of $11 at one time. So let's have a look at what was happening in the market. So we knew the shorts had to close. We knew there was a huge amount of synthetic shares. So what would have been the cost? So there are a total of 168 million shares approximately. So we know two uh, uh, whale investors by the name of David and William, they were saying uh, towards the end, near the end, we were predicting uh, sell limit orders of around about $500. So this covered 28 million shares approximately. So from the hedge fund point of view, that would have cost them $14 billion. And then uh, the message was being well received by retail investors. I'm not sure what the insiders were, were looking at. Uh, when I, I mean insiders, I'm talking about um, uh, Greg McCabe. Uh, we can probably include John Bird in there as well, as well as uh, many uh, retail investors. So I'm gonna estimate here approximately 60 million shares uh, to cover that with an average price of uh, $150. So if we look at our average price of $150, uh, it, and the reason why we're using $150, because some people I do know had f three, four, 500 sell limit orders, but some people would have had uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is just a projected and estimated uh, figure, somewhere in the middle, around about $150 million, $150. Uh, so using that figure for 60 million shares, the hedge fund cost would be $9 billion. Then if we look at the remaining uh, shareholders, I think many people could have potentially sold at $50. So again, we can give or take. Uh, so this is just a guide uh, and we can move it up or down, but that would have cost the hedge funds $3.85 billion. Uh, and we've not even gone to the problem of um, synthetics yet, but let's have a look at the total hedge fund cost without synthetics, $26.85 billion. Now, if you add on the synthetics, then I now do actually see what the problem is for the hedge funds, for the brokers, they didn't want to pay $26.85 billion plus the cost of synthetic. So they are saying this would have caused major disruption for us, major disruption in the marketplace. Let's carry out a trading halt. So the situation that we now have is due to that halt, uh, um, the vast majority of retail holders are now in significant losses. I am aware that many retail holders are now uh, struggling in terms of uh, cost of living. So what I now like to do is present uh, the other side of the coin, and this is legislation with regard to short selling. So obviously we've had the trading halt, but I think as retail investors, what we would now like to do, again, this is from the SEC website, uh, and what they have stated here is let's have a look at uh, the regulations and the rules for short sellers, and uh, hopefully um, they can be forced to abide by these rules. So if we look at uh, short sales, uh, what is a short sale? I'm sure we all know what a short sale is, but it states here from the SEC website, if the price of a stock rises, short sellers will incur a loss. So we want to see them incur a loss. That's in the uh, on the SEC website. And at the bottom, specific to MMTLP, it says, how does short selling work? But what is relevant for us, it states at the bottom, if the stock you borrow pays a dividend, you must pay the dividend to the person of firm making the loan. So what that basically means is they must pay us the value of the dividend if they shorted MMTLP. So that's the guideline from the SEC, and that is all we want. We are asking for the rule of law. I didn't realize that was too much to ask, but that's what we are asking for. Uh, now let's move on to rule 204, part A uh, at the bottom, and we can see um, here that 
um, this is also covering short selling and what it st states here is uh, there is a closeout requ uh, requirement and uh, the rule 204 requires brokers and dealers uh, that are participating of a registered closing in to close to take action to close out failure to deliver positions so that's what we are asking for we're asking for the rule 204a here from the short selling uh, short sale price test circuit breaker rule 201 uh, rule 203 and the one we're focusing on is rule 204 for this rule to be abided by uh, closing out requires brokers or dealers to purchase or borrow securities of uh, like kind and quantity so requires so uh, can we see implementation of this role the uh, rule the participant must close out a failure to deliver position for a short sale transaction by no later than the beginning of the regular trading hours on the settlement date following the settlement date so we're still waiting what's going on the clock is ticking these rules are there uh, they're there to protect us as investors so let's have some implementation here as well and the final part of rule 203 section b part three again just to clarify for any uh, short sellers and hedge funds out there must immediately purchase shares to close out fail to deliver in securities with large and persistent failures to deliver if the failure to deliver persists for 13 consecutive days uh, for whatever reason uh, a registered clear agency has failure to deliver for more than 13 consecutive days the requirement to close out such position under rule 203b3 remains in effect so what we're asking for is the rule of law and uh, that's all and finally just to finish off i think uh, if we take a balanced view and look at both sides of the argument the hedge funds don't want to pay billions and billions of dollars uh, as well as the brokers they don't want to pay billions of dollars we don't want to take a loss so i think there has to be a deal we have to have a compromise and i think uh, the vast majority of retail investors are not going to want a long and drawn out legal process so behind the scenes i think there has to be some agreement and from my point of view i would like a situation where all investors get the same agreed amount so i know there is a gray market out there and something could be done there behind the scenes but i think uh, what would be uh, positive here is if we have a clear and transparent process so all investors get the same deal whether that's a uh, hundred dollars eighty dollars fifty dollars let's come to a negotiating uh, let's have some uh, negotiation come up with a compromise uh, because i think we do want an end to this matter and finally if you'd like to get access to our weekly watch list you can certainly consider joining us in our discord for little nine dollars a month information is available in the description below thank you very much for watching please stay tuned